Happy Easter, friends of St. Peter's, and thank you so much for joining us in worship this weekend. It is an exciting weekend. Not only is this our third Sunday of Easter weekend, but it is also the weekend we get to celebrate the baptism of Catherine Ann Rose, a newer parishioner to St. Peter's. And we also have a guest preacher, the very priest who married Catherine's parents and baptized her big sister the Reverend Jacob Smith from Calvary St. George in New York City. So welcome, uh, Father Jacob. It's great to have you amongst us, not only as the officiant to the baptism, but also as our preacher this weekend. I hope you will like and share this video so that your friends and family might join us in worship today. And also click on the link in the description of this video so that you can open up the bulletin, sing along with us, and join in making this worship together. Our opening hymn is one of my Easter favorites, in fact, because it reminds us of how immediate and relevant the gift of resurrection is. This hymn is Christ is Alive. risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And praying together, O God, o God Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, who by your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ has, has promised to all those who seek your kingdom and, and its righteousness, righteousness all, all things, things necessary, necessary to sustain their, their life. life. Send us, we entreat you, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in praying the psalm. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. They said, He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds and to write <clears throat> to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This is always my favorite time on any worship weekend to be able to speak with our youngest friends about what we're hearing in the readings. And so I invite you grown-ups to invite around the phone or the iPad, laptop, or the TV on the wall to invite our youngest friends to join us for this time. Well, I'm excited today. You know why I'm excited? Catherine Ann Rose is getting baptized. It's so exciting. And you're about to hear from um, the priest who married her parents, Father Jacob, uh, is gonna give the grown-up sermon, but I still get to talk to you, which makes me so very happy because Catherine Ann Rose is getting baptized. And she's living out in this moment, and her family and godparents are living out in this moment what we hear in the reading from 1 John, that through Jesus, we are assured that we are God's children. God's children. We are part of God's beautiful family. That is the promise and that is the hope that we are gifted with in Jesus. And when we're baptized, and when we're baptized, we celebrate that inward grace, that's what sacraments are. They're outward and visible signs of inward and invisible grace. And that is uh, the invisible grace that already exists in Catherine uh, that we are celebrating through her baptism. And it's true for each and every one of you, even as it's true for me and it's for your parents and grandparents and godparents. God loves us as God's dear beloved children. And it's through our relationship with Jesus that we come to know that love so well. The love of God who uh, has been able to overcome even the power of death on our behalf. And that's what we celebrate during this Easter season, isn't it? That Jesus overcame even the power of death. And through our relationship with him, we experience that as well. That is such good news. Such good news that... This is the God who loves us, the God who loves us like beloved children, the same God who does so much on our behalf through the love of Jesus. So when you're thinking about Easter, because it's still the Easter season, when you're thinking about Easter, and when you think about your own baptism, remember, your baptism is an affirmation of God's love, that God loves you tenderly and mightily and immeasurably. There is no way to quantify how much God loves you. Indeed, that is what we celebrate, God's love that can overcome even the power of death. And that is why, my friends, we sing together the Alleluia song. Welcome the Reverend Jacob Smith here 
uh, to be our preacher and the officiant at the baptism today. Father Jacob, again, welcome. Well, good morning, St. Peter's Del Mar. My name is the Reverend Jacob Smith, and I'm the rector of Calvary St. George's Episcopal Church here in Manhattan. And I want to say thank you to uh, Mother Paige for the uh, extremely warm invitation to preach this morning, and also the warm invitation last week to baptize the daughter of my friend Nathan Rose, to baptize Kit Rose, who this family has just moved from New York to San Diego. And so, um, just so grateful for all of you and your ministry there. The other day I was reading an article about clergy behavior and, and clergy plans in the midst of a pandemic. And uh, I started to wonder what Jesus would do um, on that first Monday after Easter if he was just a regular old clergy person, you know. And I thought, well, maybe on that first Easter Monday, if he just was a regular old clergy person, he probably would have slept in because obviously the previous week, Holy Week, not only was busy, but it was brutal. And then, <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. But anyway, and then after that, if Jesus was just, you know, a regular old clergy person, I think he would have announced his retirement. In this article I read, it said that Duke Divinity had done a survey of 500 clergy across 17 denominations, and one, and f one out of four of them is considering retiring, actually planning to retire, by the end of 2022. The other survey that I read about in this article was done by a firm hired by the United Church of Christ. And this survey said that many clergy were, in light of burnout, harder and longer hours, and the uncertainty of the future, considering early retirement or a career move. In the article, one burned out clergy person said, it's not that I want to quit my ministry, I just would like to reposition myself into something else. <laughs> reposition myself, not saying, but I'm saying. However, it's not just clergy. And spiritually speaking, by Easter three, we're all a little burned out. The chocolate has been consumed. The peeps are all a little stale. The only jelly bean flavor left is like licorice. And that we respond to the Easter acclamation, the Lord is risen indeed, with a, are you certain about that? You know, the joy and the wonder of the resurrection seems to fade in light of the pressures at work, the pressures of children, the pressures of a spouse or partner or a relationship. And it can feel as if many people, it can feel like this to many people, that maybe Jesus has retired. You know, maybe Jesus rose from the dead, bought an RV, and is now driven off to a celestial Alcapoco. Well, by this point in Luke's gospel, those first disciples knew Jesus wasn't dead. And they most certainly knew that he had not retired. But what did it all mean? The disciples, they're startled and afraid. They think they're actually seeing ghosts. But this is no ghost. This is a body. And Jesus, like last week to Thomas, he shows them his hands and his feet. Jesus invites them to touch him. He's literally telling these shell-shocked disciples, I am real. I'm not a ghost. Hearkening back to that second chapter of Genesis, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. As Christians, we believe and confess in the resurrection of the body. And this is my first point. Jesus is most certainly not retired, but rather now has been bodily repositioned, if you will. Flesh and blood, he's been repositioned, he's been resurrected as our triumphant Lord. For those wounds mark him forever as the crucified one, the one who laid down his life for the sin of the world. And this is at the very heart of Easter. This is at the very heart of our faith, and it gives us the courage and the conviction to cry out, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And despite what you may or may not be experiencing, the resurrected Christ still, still says to you, Peace be with you. 
This is a resurrected statement because peace be with you says that death has been defeated. Sin is forgiven. Your life is restored. And guess what? The grave cannot hold you. No, Jesus most certainly is not retired. He is alive and well and is continuing to apply that promise of peace be with you. That promise of reposition, or should I say resurrection, to your hearts and lives today. In Luke's gospel, Jesus' resurrection is always followed by a meal. You see it on the road to Emmaus, and we see it here. And we prayed it in our collect. Christ reveals himself in the breaking of bread. And what Jesus is doing in this meal here, he says, hey, give me some fish. And in eating the fish, Jesus provides additional emphasis to his bodily resurrection. Why? Because ghosts don't eat. Unless, of course, you're Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters, and then it just kind of falls out all over the floor. Am I the only one who loved that movie? But anyway, in eating fish, he also provides, G Jesus is not only emphasizing that he is bodily resurrected, but he is illustrating the mission and ministry that his disciples now will soon be engaged in. I am indebted to Old Testament theologian and scholar Chad Bird and his work reading the New Testament through Hebrew eyes for this next point. But Chad points out that in the Hebrew scriptures, the sea and its creatures have always been emblematic of the Gentile world. For example, the prophet Jonah. That story is all about it. You have a Jewish prophet running from God on a Gentile boat where he is flung into a Gentile sea, and then he is consumed by a creature which, according to the Psalms and Isaiah 17, embody the Gentile nations, and then is therefore spit up onto the shores of the Gentiles. They're Gentile enemies. And in Matthew chapter 4, never forget, Jesus calls his disciples. You remember the evangelist quotes Isaiah 9, Galilee of the Gentiles. Or in other words, Galilee, where the sea is located, is associated with Gentiles. So now with all of that in mind, when Jesus eats the fish, this becomes a living illustration, not only of his bodily resurrection, but what his resurrection accomplished. Namely, Gentiles, you and I, are now so incorporated into the kingdom that we are part of Christ as much as consumed, digested fish. And in that act, it says that the disciples' eyes were open to understand. And it's interesting that opening of their eyes is connected to the same opening in Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent tempts Adam and Eve, that your eyes would be opened. But their eyes in that moment were closed, and now... The disciples' eyes are opened. Why? Because as Jesus says, all of the law, all of the prophets, all of the Psalms have now been fulfilled. The entire Tanakh has been accomplished. So now the disciples will be sent out like Jesus has come to them to preach peace and forgiveness to all the nations. And this is my second point. Jesus does more here than snack on some fish with his disciples. In eating fish, Jesus demonstrates he is far from retired, but rather instead he is giving his disciples a living illustration of his fulfilled mission. And by virtue of that work, he has now incorporated Gentiles into his body, and he is now sending these disciples off as eyewitnesses to proclaim the good news that they have seen and heard. Because resurrection and sending always go together. There's a very ancient Christian legend that tells us of Jesus' ascension into heaven. And when he arrives in heaven, he's met by the angel Gabriel, who asks him, now that your work is finished, what plans have you made to ensure that the gospel would spread throughout the world? And Jesus answers, well, I called some fishermen and a couple of tax collectors to walk along with me as I did my father's will. 
Gabriel's like, yeah, totally, I get it. But uh, what plans have you made? Because you're not entrusting to these people, are you? And Jesus replies, well, yeah, you know, I taught Peter, James, and John about the kingdom of God. I taught Thomas, you know, about faith. And all of them were with me as I healed and preached to the multitudes about the kingdom of God. And Gabriel, at this moment, you know, he begins to lose patience. And he's like, really? Now? I mean, all this is well and good, Jesus, but surely you must have other plans to make sure your work was not in vain and that the gospel would go out. And the legend concludes with Jesus fixating his eyes on the angel Gabriel and saying to him, I have no other plans. Now, that may sound like a retirement plan to you where you're sitting, but nothing could be further from the truth. For like that consumed fish, you and I are now the body of Christ on earth. And especially as we feed off of him and the bread that is his body, and as it's broken and he makes himself known to us. But think about all of this for a second and how you came to believe. Someone told you. Maybe that telling was your grandmother bringing you to baptism. As a baby, your parents taking you to Sunday school and dropping you off as a child. A friend was like, hey man, you gotta check out this great church, St. Peter's Del Mar. You know, someone told you. And then you in turn, you've told others as well. This is Christ by his spirit working through you. And that's how it works. <laughs> Probably with Gabriel, it's not the most efficient way to get things done, especially amongst Episcopalians. But, um, but it's God's way. Disciples, broken people, sent into the world, sprinkled as salt over the earth, and scattered as light into the darkness. This is my third point. Friends, Jesus has not retired. Rather, he now works through you to proclaim a living word from a living Lord. This dying, confused, messed up world doesn't need religious opinions, the latest Harvard business plan, mantras, methods, or programs. All it needs is one death and one resurrection. It needs our resurrected Lord with wounds and words of salvation given to and for you. For the one who has swallowed death like a broiled fish, the one whom Moses and the prophets and the Psalms testify, this is Jesus, your Lord and your God, active and living, and all for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, I present Catherine okay. and the to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I, I will, will with, with God's, God's help. Now, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce all the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. And do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Well, all of you, let us join now and reaffirm. Um, let us join with Kit and the Roses and, uh, who are committing themselves to Christ and stand and renew our own baptismal covenant, found there on the top of page 304. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. And will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's, with God's help. help. And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's, with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people? And respect the dignity of every human being. I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Well, then let us pray for Catherine, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. And teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. And send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. And bring her to the fullness of your peace and joy. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. 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 <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the gift of water, of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. This is my favorite line. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may forever continue in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you come close to? Gently hold her over the arm. How can I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. <laughs> well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sins and have raised her to new life of grace. Sustain Catherine, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and the gift and joy and wonder in all your works. 
Amen. 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 We're going to now anoint her with holy, uh, holy oil, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Catherine, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and you have been marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. 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 Now, everybody, we'll say, we receive you into the household of God. Confess, Confess the faith, faith of Christ, Christ crucified. crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Catherine, receive the light of Christ so that when the bridegroom comes, you may go forth with all the saints with joy to meet him. Amen. 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 Well, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. We greet each other with the sign of God's peace. children in our birthday and anniversary prayer and we encourage you to put in the comments either on YouTube or Facebook any birthdays or anniversaries you'd like us to celebrate this week. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much, as always, for your incredible generosity towards St. Peter's and the mission and ministry of God we seek to live out in this time and this place. If you'd like to make an offering, you're welcome to text to give to 858 2520622. You can also give online at stpetersdelmar.net slash give or send in a check to our post office box 336 Del Mar, California 92014. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
and your heart is grace. Here he lays on over all you reign, you alone can say. Here he lays on, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy on us now. For your name is great and your heart is have we given thee. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And let us pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on this day and always. Amen. We do have a few announcements. First off, I want to thank the Rose family for giving us the privilege of being able to celebrate Catherine's baptism today. We look forward to uh, welcoming you again to St. Peter's in person when we're able to do that once more. The Rose family joined us late in 2019, so we were only starting to get to know each other when the pandemic hit. So it's really a treat to get to celebrate this incredible milestone in your family's life. And to Father Jacob, who happened to be in Del Mar at a perfect time to baptize Catherine and to participate in our service this weekend. We are so incredibly grateful. Now, this was a busy week at St. Peter's and we had a vestry meeting on Tuesday night and I'm sure you'll want to hear what the vestry discussed. I'm Kathy Ringrose and this is my third and last year of serving you on the vestry. I'd like to pause a moment and say a word about vestry service. This is not my first experience serving on a St. Peter's vestry, and our current vestry, under Mother Page's guidance, is a very congenial and productive body. I want to encourage all of you, if asked, to run for the vestry or place on the vestry, to take advantage of this opportunity for service to St. Peter's. It was a very good experience for me and will be for you too. Now, onto a report of a very busy meeting last Tuesday evening. Your vestry met this last Tuesday night. It was a full and exciting meeting. Gary Rice, our investment manager, reported that our endowment ended the quarter with $2.28 million mostly due to recent generous gifts, but also to a 3.13% investment gain. Peggy Martin, our owner's representative and the building committee updated us on the current status of the Trinity expansion. It's hard to imagine a better building committee. We're fortunate and thankful. We unanimously approved the task force's recommendation to allow brief on-campus, outdoor, in-person worship to begin very soon. St. Peter's Vestry approved on-campus outdoor Sunday school for children and youth, in-person choir rehearsals for adults and children, in-person pastoral care, including Stephen Ministry and Eucharistic Visitor Ministry. Of course, these motions were approved under conditions that comply with all current safety guidelines of the CDC, State of California, County of San Diego, and Episcopal Diocese of San Diego. The passage of these movements had a sea change historic feel to them. As we all remember dark days, when the return to campus was only a hope that seemed very far away. Please check your emails from St. Peter's for the latest updates and a chance to RSVP for worship in person. Heather gave us the finance update. We are in good financial shape. The Vestry approved all quarter one 2021 outreach grants of $5,975 as budgeted. We got an update from the property committee on improvements being
being made on campus, including landscaping and stained glass window upkeep. Finally, we're all deeply grateful for your pledges and offerings for the ministries of St. Peter's. We were blessed with Easter offerings even higher than expected. Please continue to remember St. Peter's vestry in your, your prayers, and thank you. Thank you so much. So this weekend, we continue our walk along the path, shall we say, at our 10 a.m. forum via Zoom. What's really fun is this week, as we resume these readings, we begin to engage in the New Testament, and it's a great time to join us. Even if you haven't had a chance to do the readings for this week, I hope you'll consider joining us 10 o'clock on Sunday morning for this incredible journey. You'll be glad you were there. It's a wonderful community, and there isn't a better time to join us as we walk this path together. There are many other exciting things happening at St. Peter's, as you know, and I just encourage you to keep an eye on your email. Um, changes to uh, what is happening online, in person, on campus, all the excitement that happens as this pandemic appears to be winding to a close. As you know, changes are happening rather quickly these days, and the more you can keep an eye on your email, the easier it will be for us to keep you up to date on the latest excitement and all of our great hope. So I uh, look forward to enjoying this next leg of our journey together with you. Our final hymn this morning is Sing Ye Faithful, Sing With Gladness. Go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.